In the ADHD community, whether to medicate or not is a controversial topic that you've made some videos on. What's your stance on the issue? So, oh my goodness, that is a heck of a good question that I hope people don't necessarily get at me for, but I want you to please understand. The question is actually never to medicate or unmedicate. It's actually to either treat or be untreated with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the question that a lot of us need to realize because when we talk about medicating, especially children, you know, we are not educating them anymore. And by medicating and not educating, what we're doing is we're saying, take this pill, be normal. And that appropriates them for a certain amount of time, but when they become legal adults, when they become 18 years old, when they have to start paying for their own medication, and they have no idea why they're doing it, a lot of the times that becomes very, very difficult for them to justify continuing on to take this medication. But also as, as a, a side controversy towards it is medication is not enough. Medication is not a cure for ADHD, it's something that is an aid. And when people don't realize that, when people take medication and then when they feel symptoms of ADHD and they go, I must have to raise my dosage, I must have to take two pills instead of one, that's actually where the abuse of medication and ADHD comes from. When we understand that medication is helping us regulate something like our dopamine and serotonin levels, that's when we can realize from a holistic approach, we can also do this as well. So the question, and once again, is never medicated or unmedicated. I believe that it's either treated or untreated with ADHD. And you can be both with either a holistic lifestyle or a medicated lifestyle. Now you're based out of Canada and although most of your content is produced for an adult viewership, you'd mention that you'd like to be a father one day. Do you think that the school systems in Canada are ADHD friendly and how can they improve? My goodness, oh, that's, that's a question. <laughs> Not just in Canada, but in the entire world right now, I believe that the way that ADHD is viewed societally needs to change. Mm -hmm. And as I want to be a father one day, I'm very, very excited to be. I also know that there needs to be different accommodations in the school system, different accommodations in the work environment that are able to help people with ADHD kind of thrive under their beautiful brains. Mm -hmm. You need to look at people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, um, sports stars such as Michael Phelps, Michael Jordan, lots of Michaels. Um, <laughs> you know, Kobe Bryant, you look at Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, Will Smith, unbelievable names in the world that have ADHD. And you wonder, how many people are we actually denying the ability to be unbelievable when they are in a system that wasn't made to have them use their brain to their full advantage? So I, I personally believe that a big thing that we need to be able to change in the world is the way that information gets out there. Because right now in general, people with ADHD don't know about people with ADHD, let alone the people that don't have ADHD. I feel bad for every one of us at the moment because no one knows how to help each other. In terms of accommodation, I think that there needs to be I, the ideas behind regulating your neurochemicals in terms of taking 10 to 20 minute breaks. Science has proven time and time again how much that helps. And you'll actually find in the ADHD community, many people smoke cigarettes and a lot of people actually don't understand the relation behind that but it's because smoking cigarettes is it's a very very accepted in society reason to take a 10 minute break and a lot of people don't realize how much that's actually helping us from a neurochemical standpoint lifestyle is a common theme in your content even ending some of your videos with think about it it could change your life why do you feel that lifestyle correlates so strongly with adhd success uh, oh, again, another fantastic question. <laughs> I know I keep saying that. Um, so lifestyle is very, very important to the ADHD brain because where we are very dopamine seeking human beings. And it, for those of you that don't know, dopamine is the craziest chemical in your entire brain. It's the only chemical that actually has the ability to control what we're thinking about, how we're thinking about it, and our morality of what is right or wrong towards that subject. To talk about the severity of why we need dopamine, we need to understand that this is the sole chemical that is controlling our, our concentration our motivation and our pleasure and when we don't have this chemical which is something that is very very common amongst people with ADHD we don't feel concentrated we don't feel pleasure and we don't feel the same amount of motivation so obviously regardless of us as human beings our brain wants that chemical inside of us and once again just to reiterate the point it can control what we're thinking about how we're thinking about it and our morality of what is right or wrong so Tom Bilyeu from the host of Impact Theory actually said it best when he says that if you don't go searching for your neurochemicals, your brain will find them for you. And I believe that this is what leads to a lot of us to the food addiction, the drug addiction, um, the, the worse lifestyles that are based around TV, video games, um, and overeating. That happens to a lot of us because we find our satisfaction. TV, video games, eating, drugs, nicotine, alcohol, all of these things have one massive thing in common, and that's that they give a lot of dopamine. 
So when we don't have a certain lifestyle in place that's giving us these things through you know certain healthy foods, uh, proper exercise, proper habit formation, the problem is we're going to find it on the easier side. And I believe that that's why the lifestyle is so incredibly important.